This is Graham from .easy coming back to you with another video. Today we're going to be covering more security to do with your accounts. Lately we've been covering a lot of WordPress security and today we're actually going to show you something on how to make your FTP more secure when you're connecting to the server. This will work for any of you using cPanel to make any changes to your account. So the way you can easily do this is within member zone. You'll actually find a walkthrough that we've written on any time you go to check your FTP information. We'll start off by showing that to you and then we'll be explaining things as we go with a couple different programs. We'll be using FileZilla for those of you who use Windows. It is a free open source program. It's very easy to use, very easy to play around with. A lot of people recommend it. On the Mac, we're going to be using Cyberduck, which is also free to use. It is very well used on the Mac and it runs quite seamlessly. So the first thing we're going to be doing is, again, in Member Zone, this is where you can find most of your account information. We're going to be showing you specifically how to get to the FTP information. You simply log into .easy, just like you normally would to your account. Once you're in Member Zone, you'll see an option for FTP info. You'll find this under Quick Reference. If you click on this one, for those of you who have come in before, you'll now notice a little message at the bottom. And for those of you who are coming into the first time, this is where you can find your FTP information on your account so that you can connect up any time. Now you're going to see this little notice at the bottom. It says, to best protect your hosting account and data, we highly recommend that you connect to our services using a secured FTP connection. Now we're going to be showing you how to do that today, but if you do want a full explanation and written steps at any time, there is actually a link you can click on here for setup instructions, and it will actually go through and show you how to do them. So you can always go through and check that out here. Now, because we're actually in a Windows machine right now, we're going to be covering FileZilla, which works quite well with Windows. We're going to be showing you how to set this up. Now, once you've got FileZilla open, as you can see, I've already got it open here. You want to start off by going to File at the top and then into the Site Manager. Now, although some of you may be connecting through the top here where it says Host, Username, and Password using the Quick Connect, this actually isn't that efficient of a way of doing it because you have to connect every time. If you're going through the Site Manager, like you see we've actually got some set up here, just temporary ones. This is all allow you to save the settings so that you can connect very easily from now on. Additionally, this is the way you can set up the secure version of it. So as you can see here, we have two of them set up. One is just a demo site we set up and one's a sample domain, which is the one we normally do any of our videos on. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be modifying the information here. Now we can see right now that it says the host name is here, the protocol is here, everything is here that we normally have. Now, this is just a normal FTP connection, which is the way some of you may have been connecting before. And this, although it will definitely get the job done, it's not the most secure way of connecting up, which is why we're going to be showing you how to do the more secure version of it. So what we're going to do just to start a brand new, so you guys all see what you're doing here, is we're going to go ahead and remove this. And we're going to click on where it says new site. It's going to first of all ask you to name the site. And we're going to call this sample domain to keep it simpler for us. You can call it whatever you like, whatever seems easiest for you. On the side here where it says host, we're going to type in the address, which is just FTP, and then your actual website itself, so sample domain.net in our case. You can use anything else. If you remember back to the screen we were looking at, if you've ever had your DNS pointed somewhere else or if you're trying to make these changes before fully propagating over the DNS, you can use the actual IP address here as well instead of the host name to connect. So that's why that's there. So it is better generally to use the actual address here so that it will propagate to the right location for you and you less changes in the future you need to do. So where it says protocol here, you can see it says FTP and SFTP. And where you can see here, it says encryption type. You can see FTP, FTP over TLS, and require implicit FTP. So what we're going to be doing here for the first one is we're going to be leaving it as FTP. We're not going to set it up to the SSH, because that's something entirely different. And you're definitely going to get errors if you select that one, so make sure you don't. Under here, instead of using plain FTP, if you want to go to the one here where it says require explicit FTP over TLS, where it says anonymous. We're going to be setting this for, you can either use normal, which will allow you to add a password in here, or if you want to be more secure, you can actually set this to ask password. Now the difference between these two is, if you set it to normal, is it'll allow you to put the password in here and actually save it in the settings so that you can connect at any time. If you switch it so it says ask for password, what happens is it'll allow you to save a username, whatever one you want, but as soon as you go to actually sign into it or connect anytime, it'll always pop up a prompt to ask for password. So we're going to be setting it to ask for password, although some of you may not like this feature, it is definitely a safer, more secure route to go. 
So we put in ours. We then have all the settings here. Now there are some other settings we're just going to quickly mention for you of those, which will help you as well. Under the transfer settings, you can see where it says transfer mode here. You get a couple different options, default, active, and passive. Now typically speaking, passive is a better way to go. It has a better chance of connecting rather than active or default. The difference between passive and active is the way it tries to connect up to the server. Passive basically communicates from your computer to the server, asking what the best port and information to transfer across is on, and will go based on the server's recommendation. Whereas active does the opposite. This actual, your computer will tell it which port it wants to use, which one it wants to connect with, and then the server will try and correspond to that as well. So generally speaking, passive will have a higher success rate, and you may even get some better speeds and other things to it. Now the other one here is to limit the number of simultaneous connections. Now typically the reason for doing this is because if you try and upload a lot of content at once, or if you have problems with slower speeds sometimes, or if you're experiencing issues with your connection, as well as if you're trying to upload larger files, you may end up having some problems. FTP programs will tend to either, in the case of uploading a lot of files, or in the case of uploading a large file, will try and open a lot of extra connections and try and speed things up. Now this can be good in the case that it gets things done a bit faster. The downside to this though is it can sometimes either open up too many connections or it can actually get stuck and hang on certain connections and this can actually crash your FTP. Additionally speaking, if you have a slower connection or you're having connection issues, you could, may want to go ahead and disable this as well and slow it down to a certain number of connections to make sure that it doesn't disconnect and try and reconnect too many times and open a whole bunch of extra connections, again, jamming up the system. So typically, we recommend to set this to either one or two, depending on your preference. You never want to set it to more than two because that's definitely when you can start to see a couple errors and other things show up. So we want to set it to that and then we're going to click on where it says connect. So as we said ask the password, it now brings up this box here. Now if you set it to just normal and you typed in the password, you're not going to see this box. It's just going to log you in automatically. So we're going to type in the password here, wait for it to connect. Now this message may seem like an error message to those of you who are using it for the first time or used to using normal FTP. This is actually not an error message. This is more of a warning. What's happening is this actual FTP program, so FileZell in this case, is telling you that it connected up to the server. It can see that there's an SSL certificate there and there is the security methods, but it's not sure whether or not it should trust it. Now the reason why it's actually coming up for this is the way the SSL certificates are set up is they're set up on the actual domain and they're set up so they can allow anyone on that domain, so any account, to have access to that SSL to go ahead and connect and be secure whenever they use their connections. Now this is why it's actually throwing up the error. This is okay. It's actually quite commonly done and quite normal. So you don't need to worry about this. Now an easy way to check to make sure it is the right place you're connecting to, if you go under where it says subject of certificate, It'll actually say here the common name for the domain, which you'll see is the actual server in this case. If you go into your cPanel, you can actually see this down the left-hand side menu, so you can confirm it there if you want. But if you see the .ez.com, this is a pretty good indication to you that you've hit one of our servers, and it's definitely where you want to be. You can definitely go ahead and look through the actual certificate if you want, or confirm the server names. But we can see because it's the one here, the one we know we should be going to, we're okay with it. So we want to click on where it says always trust certificate in future sessions. This means that you won't see this message anymore come up and you don't need to worry about it. So we're going to click on where it says OK and we can see here it goes through the commands. We can see once it says directory listing successful, you know it's got in everything. If you have a larger site, you may see it sit here and hang for a second. This is just it pulling up all of your files and everything, so that's fine. So we can see everything is popped up here. Everything is exactly where we want. Now, where you would normally upload your website or make any changes is within the public underscore HTML folder. If we open here, we can see a bunch of the content that we've installed at different times through different videos and content. So you can see very easily there's everything here. So this is the way you can connect up using a secure connection. You make sure that anything that you send up to the server or download from the server is encrypted, as well as any information you're trying to send across just in general. You can set it to either ask for a password or set it to normal if you want, depending on whichever, however secure you want to be. And the certificate, once you've allowed it, shouldn't pop up anymore. And that's also an indication to you that there is an SSL certificate on the server, and it is, in fact, working. 
So this is how you can set it up within FileZilla. Very simple, very easy to do, not much different than the normal FTP you're used to. Settings and steps are within Member Zone again. Now this is again available for the cPanel servers. Those of you who are using our Ensum servers, unfortunately it doesn't actually work with the Ensum servers. We are seeing if we can do something about this, but we would suggest you migrate to our cPanel servers. It is actually quite simple and easy to do. It's actually just a one-time charge of $12.95 to do it. If we can migrate it, everything across, you want to make sure to have a backup of your site before we make any changes, of course. But we can easily get that up and running on a cPanel. They are more secure, they have better resource management, and they have a lot more features to them. So you definitely want to take a look into that if you want to get access to the more secure versions of SSL as well to make sure that you can connect your FTP. Make sure you do follow us on Twitter and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can check out more videos when they come to them, as well as make sure to like our Facebook page so you can see more things that we're posting on there and let you know what's going on. For any of our WordPress security videos, which we have made a lot of, you can check our wordpress.ec.com for more information on that.